Okay, uh, we're gonna do a short video. Uh, see if we can get this thing tore apart. I got a, I got a lot to do to give this thing a good facelift. It is uh, pretty grungy. Uh, don't know if you can see down in the tank, uh, but the inside of the tank is completely, uh, it's not real rusted in, in the very bottom for some reason, but uh, around the filler neck, I guess condensation's done built up, but it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's nasty. But this bike is actually uh, gonna get the uh, aftermarket motorcycle tank, so we're not gonna need this. But there's a lot of things we need to clean up. We need to get this uh, exhaust sandblasted because I need to add some pipe to it probably. Uh, starter housing. Got to do the typical stuff, make it look a little fancier. We're probably going to powder coat some stuff, fan shroud, starter housing, probably valve cover. You know, a normal thing. Uh, but in order to do that, uh, we got to rip it apart. So hopefully I got everything I need here. We're going to try and do a quick um, rip, rip snort and take it apart sling it apart and then whenever i go back together this motor is actually going to get some uh uh we're going to put a cam in it i'm uh, going to put a mod 2 cam probably 22 pound springs uh we're going to totally remove the governor um so i'll go through that process probably a bunch of you have seen it but i get messages sometimes people don't uh have not taken the governor out of one and don't know really what to do so if you are watching this and you haven't removed the governor maybe this will uh educate you and let you know how you can do it on your mini bike engine but we're gonna start ripping it apart and uh get it tore down don't reach there let's grab us uh we'll probably need a 13. might as well grab a 12. i will need a tray that way uh, the bolts don't roll everywhere But yeah, this thing is, uh, don't have a lot of run time on it. It's got a lot of sitting around time. Then got a little, uh, on the crusty, rusty side. But, uh, it's gonna look good when we get done with it. It'll look, uh, we might be able to use that maybe. Maybe not. All right, let's grab a 10. Yank the valve cover off. That's an eight, not a 10. Nice to clean it. See if we can ease this valve cover gasket off. These are one of those uh, kind of rubbery, semi rubber cork looking thing. I don't know. These the old cork gaskets used to be real made out of cork, and these are kind of like a rubber cork. Anyway, whatever. Ooh, look, that motor's clean. Like I said, it don't have a lot of runtime on this engine, but it's been sitting. So we're gonna be dazzle it a little bit. Just go ahead and get the plug out. We'll take a look at look at the plug, see what it looks like. Cause I know the gas was in it that was raunchy and I already drained the gas and oil out of it cause it stunk. The gas did anyway. Eh, kind of fat. All right, let's uh, we already got the eight. So let's rip this off. So I gotta get the starter guts out of it. So I can uh, get it stripped and painted or powder coated, whatever we decide to do with it. <clears throat> Still trying to figure out a paint scheme for this bike. I always have a problem with paint schemes. What color am I gonna paint something? You ever notice the 196 has put this goofy thing on here? Yeah, gotta have it on there though. Cause if you uh, lose this and go to put this back on, notice how it don't fit. Your starter cup will actually hit the inside of here. And I've had some guys, uh, bringing me a mini bike and they got long bolts in it and they're like motors locked up you lost the spacer so <clears throat> that is that um what is that 20 19 this is a 196 i don't think it's a 19 no it is not a 19 um wrong drawer i think it's a 20. I can't see the number on that. It was a 22. What is it? A 21? Let's get this. Come on. Get out of the way. I'm trying to rush. There we go. Sit that right there. We'll get this cup out of the way. 
because we're going to put this right back on there. All right, let's get the blower housing. Get this out of the way. Get the blower housing off. That's eight millimeter. And I got one more back here. Probably going to pull that throttle linkage off. Throw it around. That's not bad. Get this out of the way. We don't need that right now. Look, let's go ahead and get the... Uh, it's got a different wire on it. Get the coil off. At least the coal bolts out of the way. Get that pigtail. All right, let's go ahead and get the... What else can get off the way? Let's get this... We don't need this. Keep this bolt for sure. Might use that for something. Put that in there. Take that off. I don't know if we're going to use a throttle assembly on here or I'm going to put a different kind. I'm not going to put a top plate on it, but we'll uh, figure that out when we get to that part. But for now, oh, look, this has got one of them uh, Tilson carburetors on it. I've never really uh, used one of these, but obviously I, I got a new one, uh, aftermarket carburetor. But this one is definitely going to be crusty for sure. But I know you... Uh, it's kind of tricky because you got to use an Allen wrench to uh, to do your adjustments on everything. But they say if you got one these set really good, they work great. My opinion, I've never uh, used one, so I really can't say much. But like I said, we're gonna put a different carb on it. But we do need to keep the hardware and pull this off. Was this actually put on the right way? I see a lot of people. Well, actually, this has to go on a certain way. And this one uh, eh, eh, was not put on the right way, well, don't look like. Actually supposed to go like that. Because this little notch out right here, that's in the very top. I guess you can see that. Let me see if we can get a, get a pointer. This little notch right here, if you don't put this on the correct way, it will actually... Uh, let's see, we've got a carburetor right here. See, a lot of people put these on like how this one was on, was just like so, which will go on. But what you're doing is if you can see this little notch that's in uh, this gasket, or you can call it spacer, has to be just like so, because this allows your carburetor to vent. So if you put this on incorrect, which it will go, throw it on the floor. All right, like I was saying, if you put it on incorrect, you notice how it covers the hole up in your carburetor? And then people are like, how come it doesn't run or it floods or it runs like it's on choke that right there has to be installed just like so so there's you uh, already a tech tip of the day if you didn't know or if you put your carburetor on you got in a hurry i've done it then realized oh hold on a second it's on the wrong way so this is the right way it needs to go notch needs to allow the vent in your carburetor to breathe all right tech tip 101 oh look at this let me slide this over, pull that off. Get you a spring out. Woo! God almighty, that stinks. We'll just sit that right there. Nasty. Let's see if we can get this off without messing the gasket up. Which I usually put new gaskets on them anyway, but this one's stuck pretty good. But anyhow, let's go ahead and get the tank off, get it out of the way. We've got an eight millimeter at the back. Uh, lay over here, rascal. These are uh, 13s, it look like. We got 13 right here, I think. Yep. Booyah. Get out of there. Come on. There you go. So I wonder what everybody's doing today besides sitting around and watching me do boring stuff, taking a motor apart. Uh-huh. Leave me a comment. What are you up to today, folks? I'm like usual, either uh, I got caught up on everybody's side stuff, so I was like, man, I really need to get this done so I can start uh, getting the rest of the bike figured out for paint scheme and all that good stuff. So I was like, oh, I got a few minutes. Let me ramble to some folks. I greatly appreciate y'all uh, following along and subscribing. I do have a lot of cool uh, things in the works, different projects, um, whatnot. So, hopefully if this video finds you uh, somewhat helpful or whatnot, 
It's missing lock washers on some of them. So you go make sure and subscribe to the video. That's 13. I think it is. Probably should have pulled that heat shield off. All right, we'll get it off in a second. Wrong one. Wrong gun. Ooh. Head gasket. We'll put a new, I use a new cheap insurance, put a head gasket on it. If I, Sometimes if I do reuse one, say I'm working on an older lawnmower or something, people don't want to spend a lot of money on a head gasket, you know, for a Honda or whatever. And uh, I'll uh, copper coat them with K&W copper coat. Just hang it from a wire. I'll make sure and have it really clean with like uh, lacquer thinner. Give it a good good code on both sides of a K and W uh, gasket sealer. It's a spray, real sticky stuff. Stuff works really good. But on this particular one, I'm gonna put all new stuff on it. Cheap insurance, right? Don't wanna be at a race somewhere inside. Oh, just blew a head gasket. That uh, that will fun spoil all your fun weekend. One more here on the side probably throw this in the powder coat pile. How about that? Oh yeah. Look at these big old little bitty valves. <sighs> yep. Pretty clean. Ain't got no run time on it. What's the cylinder wall look like in here? Let's shine a little light in it. Look at that. Like brand new hash marks in there. Nice. Alright, let me uh Go here and get a matillo. That's a hammer. I know a few Spanish words. Uh, where's my other red hammer? Somebody's done took my red hammer. Dang, oh, there's my hammer. This is my favorite hammer. Now we're gonna get a pry bar, big screwdriver. So I got the coil out of the way, I'll just ease this right back behind here on that boss of the block. Make sure I got the magnet out of the way so you don't wanna press against the magnet. Put a little pressure on that. Have this flush. Usually give it a whack. Oh, took two whacks. I'm gonna ease that off because uh, we're gonna reuse that, clean that up. Probably throw some paint on it. Even though you don't see it. But these are your charge coil. This actually, uh, quit texting me, I'm busy. Uh, this one, a lot of times you'll have just a single charge coil, but this one actually has two charge coils on it. So we're gonna keep the charge coils on this engine because um, it has a headlight. We want to keep the factory headlight on it. So that's why we're going back with this 196. Plus it's pretty new anyway. Well, we need to take this off right here. And we can just take the whole assembly. Oh, lash cap, see, almost lost that. That's what happens when you get in a hurry. Probably ought to not put that there. Let's put it in the tray. So it'll stick, so I'll put all that together. All right, so we can pull all this off right here as assembly. Your pigtail, little rubber grommet. And we need to put this in the tray. That's to hold your wires down. Let's sit this right there out of the way. All right, let's buzz these uh, side cover bolts that are 10 millimeter. Come here, 10, here we go. Sounds funny. All right, let's see what the inside looks like. Should have got two trays. All right, screwdriver that through in the floor. Probably get a paper towel or two because it's got a little bit of oil that's going to run all over the place. Don't want to pry on this too much. I don't like sticking a screwdriver down here prying too much because then you leave uh, notches in the block. Then that's just one more place for it to uh, leak oil. All right, let's lay it back, pull this off. Look at that. 
That's why we need to clean this baby up. Bearing's good. What is on this camshaft? BNS. It's like Briggs and Stratton logo. BNS with a bunch of other numbers and letters. Huh. But it is a a steel cam and not a uh, plastic one. Like they stick in some engines. All right, let's grab a. Uh, we have a tin lane right here. All right, I'll take this right here, prop against the crank. And if you are removing the governor, it's always a good thing to invest in your ARC rod, which, oh, look, if you're doing a cam, you know, or removing the governor, this is really what you want to go with. Yeah, it's all filthy, but I'll clean it. There's a bolt that I need in there. Uh, but this is a ARC rod, so anytime you're removing the governor, it's always good insurance to go with a billet flywheel and billet rod, which you can get at your uh, gopowersports.com. You can look them up for whatever application you're doing. Um, even if you got a big block, uh, my drag bike uh, got a big block in it, and so finally I, I bit the bullet and put a flywheel and rod in it, and... Uh, it was a good thing I'd done it because uh, I went down to the local drag strip and I was running it and uh, did really good, had no problems with it. So I thought there was another race coming up. Well, I'll go ahead and invest in it and uh, put a rod and a flywheel in it. Luckily I did because whenever I opened the crankcase, like I'm doing this one, the dipper was laying in the bottom. Now nothing else was tore up. There was no scarring on anything. Um, nothing whacked it. Uh, don't know why, but there was a nice smooth break in it, and the oil dipper was laying in the bottom. I was, was like, whoa. So, it can happen. So, something you might want to think about when you're removing your governor or whatnot. It's kind of cheap insurance. The rods are really not that expensive. Um, let's wipe this off so it looks like. Wow, yeah. I ain't like no run time on it. I'll get all this, thumb this in the vat, make sure and get all the, the gunk off of it, get it all nice and cleaned up before we put it back together. Put new gaskets on it. Set that right there. This out of the way. Slide the cam out of the way. Let's go ahead and pull the crank out. Now, some people will take this gear. I usually take this gear since I'm removing the governor. This gear on the back of your uh, cam, not cam, this is a crank. The gear on the back of your crank runs your governor gear, which is this white spool right here that pushes your arm in and out, which does like so. I'll usually take this gear, um, take a hammer, and just evenly tap on it. Try not to hit the crank, because you don't want to do that. But catch right here on each side and uh, dispose of the gear. You, uh, you can make wind chimes or something out of them. Anyway, all right, so now we're gonna pull the governor shaft out. And this is odd. Normally, on uh, Predators and any other motor I've taken apart, once you remove the governor shaft, this motor's never been into, I know for a fact. Um, but normally whenever you remove this shaft, drop it down, there's always a washer that is uh, usually right here that's on top of these little bosses that are on the governor shaft. So whenever, and a lot of times they'll stick to the block. This one, this engine, does not have one. So you do pull yours off make sure you look and get that washer out of the way but huh it's kind of odd all right show you how i do this here come over here and we'll get a punch how about this one right here then you grab your mateo this right here is your pin that goes through the block that your uh, governor rides on you just take this voila roll your block over here's all your governor assembly now here's here's the pin that I just knocked out, and this is how everything goes back together. Well, I ain't putting it all the way back together, but you have a washer in there, just like so, and this spins. And then you have this washer here that's usually on the back side. Well, it's in between here. So whenever you get in here, if you pull it out from the front, which I've seen people do, which is totally fine, everybody's got their own way to do it. When you pull this governor out from the front and you take your spool and everything off, this is still going to be stuck in the block, right? You follow me? This washer, a lot of times, will stick to the back of the block. 
you got a little pocket. The pocket is right down inside there. So whenever you, uh, if you pull your governor out from the front, that washer will be stuck in there. And if you don't get that out and it vibrates later after you're riding the bike down the road, this vibrates out and gets hung into something, uh, it's gonna make for a bad day of riding. So, like I said, there's usually a washer up here you need to make sure you retrieve out and make sure and retrieve this washer too that's usually hidden. Now, you can either do a couple things <clears throat> on the governor where you pull the, uh, where you take the bolt out. Uh, sometimes if you got a high revenue motor and you need to, to, to vent the block and you do not, you don't have an ARC side cover, um, you can, I've tapped these before. You can use a quarter 20 tap or a, I think I've even drilled it out, which makes it kind of thin, but I think I've used a eighth inch tap. So you can screw in like a, a, a brass barb to, to vent your crank case. Or a lot of, a lot of guys will just uh, run a self-tapping bolt in it with some sealer. And you can do the same thing on the back side. Um, but usually what I'll do in, in this case is I'll get this uh, pin that came out and I'll just pop this clip off of here. And of course I'm filming, so now I, it's gonna be twice as bad because I don't wanna come off. Normally these things, I just grab them, they pop off. There we go. Come on. All right, I'll just take the clip off just like so, and just like driving a nail. And then all it is is flush. So, get it straight, which is not. Well, y'all, as long as it's flush right there, you can put the pin right back in it. It's pressed in there good enough, you gotta beat it with a hammer, so it's not gonna fall out. So you can do it that way or you can put a self-tapping screw. These are your dowel pins that'll hold your gasket and also keeps your side cover in line. I'm, I'm gonna pull these out so whenever I get ready to wash everything, uh, I won't lose them. Also, you normally have two right here that'll slide out. And these are for your head and your head gasket. So, and they're two different sizes so you can't, you can't interchange them. All right, so got it all ripped apart. This thing is filthy, so I'll get the rest of the gasket off of it, get the side cover gasket all cleaned off. Um, the seals were good, so I'm just gonna do a light pressure washing on it. I'm gonna leave the seals alone. This motor does not have hardly any run time on it all, and I know that for a fact. And if, if I didn't know any history on the motor, I would probably just all new gaskets and seals, but this one's just really filthy from sitting. So I'm gonna go through that. Um, I might mill a little bit on the head, uh, and might throw just a little port in it. We're not building a, a go fast motor. We're just building a reliable little street cruiser. So that's what we got today. We got a whole mess of stuff we got to clean up and go through. And then whenever I get ready to assemble the engine, um, I'll show you how I would do all that. Line up the camshaft if if you don't know how to, if you never put a camshaft in one, how to line the dots up, and uh, show you how all the where to set your valve as far as getting your. Uh, getting your motor off the compression valve. Uh, seen a lot of guys have problems after they put a cam in it. Um, they're having problems with it not cranking or yanking the rope back in their hand. Um, I'll kind of give you some of it now, but whenever you have your motor at top dead center, your piston all the way up, I always bring it up and then bring it back down just a hair. Cause basically what you're doing is when you bring it up, this valve is not sitting on the camshaft, it's sitting on the cam release right here. So if you got it sitting on the cam release or the decompression valve, whatever you'd like to call it, if you got it sitting on top of that, that's gonna throw your valve train way off because time you roll your motor over a little bit more, now your tappet or lifter is actually sitting on the lobe of the cam. And that is actually where you need to uh, make sure you have your valve adjustment set is when it's sitting here and not, <clears throat> I don't know if that you can really see that, not riding on the um, the decompression valve because as the motor starts spinning your decompression valve will kick out of the way and then it's going to sit on your low so that's where you need to do your valve adjustment is in this area here not when it's sitting on top of it because that's several several thousands that it's going to throw your valves off <clears throat> but anyway i'll get more in depth than that um show you how i do it anyway everybody does stuff a little different but i can show you my way whenever we reassemble the engine when I got everything all cleaned up and uh, 
do the cam springs and all that good stuff. So anyway, I'm going to wrap this up here. It's uh, about motorcycle riding time. So hope you all enjoyed this part of it and we'll see y'all soon.